Hey everyone, Joe Soto here, and we have an exciting show for you today. I am thrilled to have the legendary king of sales, Jeffrey Gittimer, on the show with us. If you want to thrive in the new year, you've got to understand uh, how to master uh, going virtual, going live on the platforms that you're on right now watching this or listening to this on. So we're going to dive into that and I'll be right back with you. Just stay with me. And we've got Jeffrey Gittimer coming on. This is the Not Your Average Joe Show, where each week we bring you sales, marketing, and mindset strategies you need to get to your next level. And now, here's your host, international business mentor, Joe Soto. Jeffrey Gittimer is back in the house. Welcome, Jeffrey. What a nice intro you have. Mine looks, mine's like crappy compared to yours. I don't even have one compared to yours. I just say yeah. hello. I'm um, so excited to have you on here. I, I don't, you know, I've had you, you're the only person I've had on here twice. This is my 26th episode. Well, in honor of that, I'm going to take out my, does it matter if I have my earplugs in or not? It doesn't, matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, as long as there's not echo. Yeah. I thought, okay. I think we're good. Yeah, we're good. So for those of you who are maybe new to the show or are unfamiliar with Jeffrey Gittimer, we're new to the world. Author of, I mean, he probably got his books right around him. I think I it's do. like 17 books now, but the ones that you're most well known for, I mean, there's several, but the little red book of selling. Yep. Yeah, and the sales Bible. Yep. Boom. And I've got like every edition of that one. And then you just You've you've, re you've you've been writing a book like every year it seems like, and your latest <laughs> book, uh, we'll talk about later, called Go Live, which is subtitled the title of this show, which is how do you turn virtual or turning virtual connections into paying customers. That's what we're going to dive into and talk. If you've got questions and you're watching this live, put them in the comments, and I'm going to be giving away a couple signed copies of Jeffrey's book today. <clears throat> I'll tell you how to get that in a little bit. Okay. So, and we got some people who are joining us and coming on now. Jeffrey, congratulations on the book. You wrote the Thank book. You. You Thank wrote you. The book during a pandemic. So, yeah, tell us what, I, first of all, tell us what inspired the book. And I want everyone to understand we're going to be diving into strategies from the book. He doesn't know this, but I have two pages of questions to extract from the inside of Jeffrey's brain some good stuff. Well, so, I'm going to throw this at you. The book started out as a podcast book. Because our podcast, Sell or Die, has, um, holy smokes, Soto Podcast. Look at that, you're there. Um, the book, sell, the, the podcast, Sell or Die, has a couple of million downloads, like two and a half million downloads. And I thought, this is perfect. I'll do a, I'll do a podcast book. I'm going to put these back in because I feel there's an echo. In and I don't hear it, but in honor of you, Jeffrey, today I have my, I have my. Uh, I don't have the sell or die cup, but I have the coffee is for closers cup. I have this in honor of you. This guy is the shit. I love that one. That's my favorite cup. When I visited Jeffrey at his home, I got I I took a selfie of me holding that cup. I don't know if you know that. I think I sent to Lene. Oh yeah. <laughs> this guy is the shit. That's so funny. Okay. So, so go ahead. It started out as a podcast book. And I realized like the world is going live in other places and not just in podcasting, but on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. And I said, we're just going to expand it. I called the publisher and I said, look, we're going to, we're going to go from podcast, the podcast Bible to a book called go live. And we're going to talk about, and they, we, we noodled on, on the subtitle and came up with, with, turning virtual connections into paying customers. It's sharp. It's right on the money. It conveys the message. And so far it's been going crazy. But I had other people write chapters in the book who I felt were more versed at this than I, one of whom is you. And uh, because I don't know digital like you know digital, but digital is a huge part of what's going on right now. I had Ken Walls do a thing on streaming. Yeah. And I I literally I had my wife do one on becoming better at video. And of course Tara 
did her thing on podcasting. And it, the, the book is just unbelievable as a result of that. And you know what people comment on? The fact that you read your own chapter. I had everybody in the who wrote an extra chapter do their own reading. And people love it. I mean, they literally, they love it. It's, I mean, if Wiley would promote it a little bit, we could sell a few more million copies. But they're... You know. <laughs> The publisher yeah. isn't in the promotion business, so they're not yeah. good at it. I'm going to send them a mug called They Don't Give a Shit. <laughs> okay. So, um, first of all, very honored to be uh, in the book and to have a chapter in there. And I know Ken feels the same way. He's on here with us right now. Everybody can get, grab a copy of the book. But let's, let's talk about real-life strategies. Jeffrey has done something uh, I don't think I've seen from anyone um quite like what he's done and that's gone live every day for how many days are you at now do you even know um we're about 300 300 300 ish days. days in a row yeah at, at the time of us doing this and we're doing this live here in, in the middle of january uh and you never you've never missed a day right <laughs> so you know, you, you always say you get it done. You do whatever it takes, even if your ass falls off. You, I've seen you do it in the car. I've seen you stop the car. I've seen oh, you yeah. do it oh, yeah. and have distractions. I was driving back from the beach with Gabrielle. We did one. It's 302 days. 302 yeah. days, everyone. It deserves an applause, first of all. Put an applause well, in the comments. Consistency wins. Customers have come on. Old friends of mine have come on. Just like, where did this guy come from? And like, and they're going, hey, because evidently they get a notification on LinkedIn or something like that, and uh, it's it's just unbelievable who shows up to this thing. Yeah, and and the nice part about it is, and we're doing this live right now. We have people coming on. This will be, um, and this is part of the strategy we're going to talk about. You you can go live on the platforms, and what people don't know is where we're live right now. So we are live on my personal Facebook profile as time we're recording this, we're, we're broadcasting video as a, it's almost like a web TV show mm -hmm. and we are broadcasting live and I'm going live on my personal Facebook, my business Facebook page, which is for facebook.com forward slash Joe Soto page. We're going live on my YouTube channel right now. We're going live on my LinkedIn profile right now. And it could also be on the LinkedIn business page. I'm still waiting for some of that technical stuff to be worked out. And here's the killer. We're going live in our, Jeffrey and I do a mastermind together. We're live inside my my mastermind group. We're live in two of my course groups right now. People who have purchased my courses. And um, in terms of serving that community, I've invited and, and, and scheduled this to go live there too. So on eight different places at once, we're broadcasting live right now. And then what I'll do is I'll take this and I'll repurpose it and I'll upload it um, I actually just give it to my virtual assistant team and I, I give it to, I, they put it on Bcast. If you go to getbcast.com, it's an inexpensive podcast hosting service that sends out the audio of this podcast to Spotify, Apple podcast, Stitcher, and all the podcasts. It syndicates to all the channels. I don't have to do anything. I just send it to my, my virtual team and then they upload it one time and then it distributes it. So it can be across from one live. And so that's your first tip today is that it isn't that difficult to technically do this. You just go live. Jeff, Jeffrey, um, we use the same tool to go live. You want to share a little bit about a couple of the tools that you recommend? Um, we use StreamYard because, uh, and I, I thank Ken Walls personally, because he's the one who every day chided me. <clears throat> go to StreamYard. What are you doing on Facebook? Go to StreamYard. Go to StreamYard. And after a while, you kind of, you know, it's like your mom telling you to take the trash out. Eventually, you take the trash out. <laughs> and so I listened to his wisdom. And now it's, it is, uh, I couldn't do it without StreamYard. I wouldn't do it without StreamYard because it combines every one of my platforms, all my Facebook groups. I can go on eight or nine groups at one time and broadcast to everybody. It, uh, and Ken also, by the way, was instrumental in getting me a contact inside LinkedIn to get me LinkedIn live. It is not easy to do. It is the biggest freaking pain in the ass on the planet. They rejected me. I have 29,900 
LinkedIn connections. Think about how many LinkedIn connections you have. I have 29,900 LinkedIn connections and they wouldn't, they kept rejecting my, my, oh my God. So stupid. Now, and for people for people who want to go live on LinkedIn, the first step is to go to Google and Google LinkedIn live application. Yeah. It's free, it's free to apply. Um, and I don't want them to think it's too difficult because some people get in there a little faster. For me, it was a couple week wait, I think maybe two to four weeks, and then I got accepted. So you might as well do it now um, and get on there. So I would encourage you to do it. You I would do it. process for your business page on LinkedIn, but once you get approved, you're approved. So do it now. And then if you have to do it a couple more times and apply like Jeffrey did, then I would encourage you to still do it. There's nothing better. I mean, I immediately, my audience participation went way up. I mean, yeah. way, way up. Um, because LinkedIn is the business channel that the others wish they were. Okay, let's talk about some of these strategies and dive in. Right. You talk about getting a creative advantage in the book. And you you say, you know, help your customers first. And really, everything I've learned from you, and Jeffrey's been instrumental in my business and career um, everyone who's in my programs and courses know this. I speak highly of, of, of you in the programs and recommend your books, but thank you. One of the early books I ever read in, in sales were your books, the sales Bible and then the literary book of selling like we talked about, but then all the other books to follow make, take up a whole shelf on my bookshelf and you center point of everything you teach is giving value first. And it became mine. I just adopted it and said, I'm, it's everything's about giving value first, but you, you really dive into it in this group. So talk about um, some ideas you have. How can people, what do, what do you mean by helping the customers win and helping the customers, helping them first? If you publish information on your YouTube channel with a video or you do a Facebook live and you don't have an offer at the end of it, that's value. If it, and, and let me clarify that, perceived value. If the customer does not perceive it as value, it, it not, I apologize, but it's not valuable. Uh, people have a uh, what's known as a value prop. It is the biggest hunk of bullshit on the planet because it never really offers any value. It just, it's like a brag sheet about how good you are. That's, that's a good venue, Joe. It's a much better venue. Um, so I have always been, I published a column in the Business Journal, the Charlotte Business Journal, and then about 100 business journals every Friday for 15 years. Think about that. Never missed a deadline. Fifteen years. And then you wrote a column in the the, the newspaper. Yeah, and, and it went a thousand, online too. A thousand. Yeah, it was all over the place. Yeah, a thousand words a week. And finally, I just said, "Hey, this is great for me, but the world is changing, and I have to change with it." And so I went to my own newsletter, which now outcirculates the Business Journal. And, uh, you know, with blogs and all the other posts that I had on with social media, it wasn't necessary to be in those papers on a weekly basis. Other people have filled the slots and the business journal got greedy about it. They wanted to own your copyright. I'm like, go away. You know, I um, actually they two years before I stopped, the business journal sent me a letter saying you have to sign this new agreement that said when we publish your article, we own it. And I said, I wrote them back immediately and said, well, then stop publishing my article. <laughs> and they said, well, okay, well, never mind. We'll make an exception for you. I mean, can you imagine Mozart writes a symphony and they <laughs> put it in the business journal and Mozart and, and the business journal thinks they own it? Yeah. Uh, let me explain that in two words. And I don't know what the language barrier is here, but that's fucking greedy. <laughs> you know, it's a, at some point you have to yeah. be, you know, a citizen of the world not just of your own self-aggrandizement. I just, horrible. Um, but I well, just- and, and so I'm, I'm, First of all, though, let me just unpack that a little bit. When you went lot, when you would write in yeah. the business journal, you would also, even back then, you were great at repurposing content. You would take what you'd write in the business journal, sometimes repurpose that as a blog post, sometimes yep. uh, maybe may, you know, months or even a year later. Or go in front of a camera and record it. Or go in front of the I, camera I, I, and record what you wrote. Great. Yeah. Brilliant. And I, I people mean, can I, do the same thing now. It's just done differently. I will tell you this. 
as a result of that column in the paper, mm. I never made a sales call to book a seminar. Someone would call up and say, hey, I read your article every week in the paper. And I was wondering if you do events. And, yeah, I do events. And then I would go to cities, uh, Omaha, Nebraska, or Dallas, Texas, and a thousand people would show up. You know, yeah. you've been there. Yeah. And it was just, it was unbelievable, the response to that. People would just show up like I lived in their city. Oh, you don't, wait, you don't live in Atlanta? No, I don't live in Atlanta. I'm not going to, too much traffic in Atlanta. <laughs> you know, people. So I, I don't know, I just stumbled on it. And so I'm going to give this marketing mantra that I have created. Um, and it's not just giving value first. There's a, there's a, a preamble to that. I put myself in front of people that can say yes to me, comma, and I deliver value first. And that's the real magic. And you're never going to see it in a, in a marketing book because they're too busy giving you theory that doesn't really work. And what I, I, I took the value first proposition and I made it my mantra. And it works. It, it works like crazy. If, if you can do 2,500 corporate events in a 20-year period of time and never make a sales call, I've proven my, my, whatever it is, my hypothesis. Well, and you're and, doing it now. So the first yeah. lesson here is consistency. Hope everyone's getting that because consistently wrote every week without skipping yeah. a beat, a thousand words. You heard him say it a week in the, in the business journal and the Charlotte business journal. It, they also published it online. And now yeah. he's over 300 in episodes in a row of his go live. Of, of your show going live of your show every day. You go every day at 10 o'clock in the morning and I would encourage 9 people 959. That's right. 959. And I would encourage people to, to attend that you start every show off with like a theme and a topic mm -hmm. address that. And then you spend the rest of the time kind of interacting with your audience. So talk a little bit about, about the simplicity of being able to go live for people who might be thinking it's more complex than what they're making it. And they don't know what to talk about. It's not, well, you have to have a wealth of knowledge. Um, you know, people go, how do you get those ideas? A, my parents were smart. They gave me brains. Then and I just- behind him, he's got a lot of books. Yeah, and I read a lot and I prepare a lot and I, I write a lot, but I don't keep my nose in the phone all day long. I'm not interested in if my, you know, some of my high school friends got fat or something. I don't care about that. Uh, what I care about is helping other people so that I can feed my family and and provide myself with some with some financial uh, freedom. But don't take my word for it. Look at the people that are on the show right now. Let's look at um, the people that are there every day, like the um, Joachim Bera from uh, Bera is is there from Norway. He's on every day. Ken Walls on every day. Justin Benton on every day, Michelle Jesse Vincent on almost every day, Sean Litback on all the time, um, Charles Coachman on every day, and ask them what it's like. Thomas Aramark, Ackermark from Sweden on every day. There's a guy from from Japan named Toru on every day, and these are people that make a difference in my life. I'm just not making a difference in their life. Tony Thorpe's on every day. And these are Mark Gassert's on every day. Brett Williams is on every day. People are going, is he going to call my name? But I, I think <laughs> this is, you know, a mark of the message sticks. Yeah. If there's no value, they're never going to come back. If it's a sales right. pitch, well, today only, you know, I don't normally offer this, but today I'm going to offer it because I need the fucking money. Uh, I mean, because I think it's the best value that, you know, People, why do why do people do what they do, and not be real about it? That's what I don't understand. So okay, you talk, let's let's talk about the people that are thinking about going live and maybe even yeah. doing it consistently, and and what what they can do differently or what kind of value they can bring. You you say in the book, customers are in scramble mode. I love this. Yep. This um this sentence you say they have no time or patience for a slide deck or a sales pitch. 
at your lowest price ever. I love that. It's, it, it, first of all, I know you wrote it because it's your. That's how you sound. Exactly. And you and you said, but but everyone has time for help and an idea. So you share about and talk about and give strategies of bring an idea to your customer. Yep. Along with some other things we're going to talk about. But how do how do what do you mean by that? And how do they come up with an idea? You go yep. back and you look at what they need and you figure out what you can do to make that better okay. or for free. To, I'm going to give you an example. that's real easy for anybody to follow. I'm trying to make an appointment with somebody and I want to talk to them, but I don't want to go there. I want to go virtual. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to call them on the phone and go, Bob, um, do you have a Keurig? Yeah. What's your favorite um, coffee? Uh, Starbucks, uh, Sumatra. Okay, fine. Um, we're going to set an appointment. I'm going to send you a little package. When you get it, let me know. We'll set the appointment. I send him a box of Sumatra K-Cups and a mug. And a mug. Of course a mug. What do you think? I'm a cheap bastard? I, <laughs> I send the guy a mug. And when they get it, they're going to open up. They're going to go, wow. That's number one. Number two, they're going to tell at least a couple, three other people. Because it's the only time everybody anybody has ever sent them anything prior to a meeting. Yeah, especially in the mail. And it's kind of friendly. It's just it's just nice. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying to myself, okay, what else can I do to make this person feel good about themselves, about who they are? So every once in a while, I send Joe Soto a rare old book. It's not his birthday. It's not his anniversary. It's nothing. It's just for the hell of it. Correct? Yes. How do you feel when you get that? Amazing. Um, and the last one has been a treasure trove of amazing uh, poetry. In fact, I want to go grab it. But um, yeah, I, 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 you, this is invaluable. I hope people are listening because you just casually talk about it. But this is really, really effective and powerful. He's doing that and we're friends and he doesn't have to do it. He's doing it because he just... It's he lives by this adding value and giving value first principle. But for those of you that also want to earn the attention of prospects, you're looking for the next silver bullet off, you know, often, or what's the best headline I can use to grab your attention? Well, it might be as simple as just saying, do you drink coffee? And, right. you know, and, and do you, do you own a Keurig and what do you normally drink? And, and they may kind of know what you're getting at, but they might be surprised they will be surprised. You're immediately, it's a unique way to differentiate yourself. And you're, but it takes effort, takes a little bit of money. But, uh, but how much does the sales call cost if you drove there? That's right. If you drove there and went there in person, flew there. Yeah, or flew there. That's right. So, what happens is people are moving away from this. I can now go, you know, everything's turned virtual on sales. I have to now meet with people over Zoom or, virtual meetings, Google Meet, and things like this. And they, they're asking themselves, how do I differentiate myself? And you're saying you could actually differentiate yourself virtually by doing something offline and not virtual as step one. I love that. And you talk about this in your book too. Um, you have to think you have to give yourself a little bit of time to generate ideas. And I do it in the morning. Um, <clears throat> I set aside an hour for myself every day. But... Yeah. Uh, it's not that difficult. You just have to just ask for their address. Yeah, you ask for their address. If they won't give you their mailing address, wrong prospect. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I'll send it to somebody else. Yeah, and you can always. It's easy to frame it as I, I have a I have something to send you. I have a gift to send you. Everyone loves yeah. gifts, and everybody loves yeah. mail. People exactly. love mail right now. Especially um, your kids. Don't your kids love getting mail? Kids love getting mail. In fact, every day my. Uh, my two-year-old um, gets the Amazon packages. So to him, it's like Christmas every day because he gets it. And even if it's not for him, he just likes the process of running outside to grab the package. They love getting mail. Yeah. Um, and it's it's a way to personalize before you ever even talk with them. I'm, I'm thinking about all the virtual meetings I've had in the last uh, you know, few months and how I didn't do this and how it might have made me stand out more. And I and I love it. it. It could be even just sending them a Starbucks gift card, right? It doesn't have to be a copy yep. for the career. It's nope. the idea of what you're talking about yep. of, of doing something a little different 
makes them feel good before you ever really bring ideas to the table. Now you talked about, you know, bringing your customer an idea and actually helping them. So you go on a Zoom, you're in a prospecting meeting and there's two schools of thought. One is don't give away your advice or your best ideas for free. And then the other school is get, get to help them just to help them. And over a period of time, you'll earn the right for them to be your customer. And that's the side we play on and you, you play on. But talk a little bit about the people who might struggle with that. The people they want to struggle. charge for their advice first. They don't want to. Yeah, I'm going to just spend so well, much time. If you charge for your advice before you give your advice, you're not going to make much money. <laughs> I'm just going to say it that way. And there are sales gurus that tell you to don't give away your candy. That's bullshit. The more candy you give away, the more money you're going to make. But I, but I think there has to be a, a, a process in your head that says, this is where I'm willing to go for this or with this. And you make it happen. Um, Eric Bam just posted up. Uh, one day I'm doing a live podcast and he shows up. He didn't show up, but a guy that he hired in Charlotte showed up with pizza for everybody. Totally memorable. Just totally memorable. Um, yeah. And I, you know, he just want, and he also gave me a, um, a thing on my desk with my name on it, which I still keep on my desk every single day. It's cool as hell. So you think of them every time you see the gift. My yeah. buddy Hill Presser sent me a Steve Jobs business card. You've seen it. Yep. And I, I don't think it's a Steve Jobs business card. I think it's a Steve Jobs business card that was given to me by Hillel. So I think of Hillel every day, every day, not some days, every day. And so the challenge is <clears throat> there's a, a whole uh, myriad of things that you can do, but you can't be thinking of your income. You have to be thinking of their outcome. Oh, that's good. And and that way, you don't worry about your money. Money takes care of itself if the value's there. Money takes care of itself is the content there. Somebody texted me. Uh, Damn, if I, I'm going to try to find it if I can, because it's so well worth it. I what think you I just said, I'm going to repeat what you just said. You can't be thinking of your income. You have to be thinking of their outcome. Yeah. That's gold. Thanks. So You're good. correct, sir. That's totally so good. Correct. Um, <clears throat> Kevin, uh, Somebody put that in the comments so, th th so we don't forget it. Yeah. You can't be thinking of your income. You have to be thinking of their outcome. It be, be, and it's this mindset, and Jeffrey has this mindset that's unlike anyone you'll ever meet, where that just comes out because that is his that's his philosophy. It's it's I'm not I have to think about how I can serve first, how I can right. add this value, and right. the money will come. The money will come as a result of that. But keep in mind that many of the calls I get, they're already pre-sold. Jeffrey, we read your book. And that's all I have to say. That I don't have to do anything else. I already know they know me. Okay, yeah. so this guy, Brad Costin, who's on my 959 Live every morning. Last night, uh, the other day, he sent, wishing and hoping are always free. Hustle sold separately. <laughs> Is that brilliant or what? Yeah, so you, brilliant. You did these things, and he did it in two different texts. It was phenomenal. It was just phenomenal. So... And Okay, real quick, so Blake, Blake yeah. Willis posted on here first. It looks like he posted first. Don't think of your income, think of their outcome. So, right. Blake, because you posted that in the comments first, I'm going to send you a signed copy of Jeffrey's book. Um, assuming, Blake, you're willing to give us your address. Yeah, assuming you're willing to give us your address. not, you're willing to give us your address. Yeah, so, Blake, private message me and uh, on Facebook or in, in our group, and I'll... Uh, Get your address from you, and I'll send you a signed copy this week of Jeffrey's book. Thanks for thanks for being being uh, on on the show here. Uh, anyway, so not to interrupt that last quote because that one was really good too. I love that hustle. The hustle is optional. Is that what, it, what sold, the last part yeah, was? Hustle sold separately. It's uh, so hustle good. Hustle sold separately. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So you know, because especially if you're giving value first and going consistent on these platforms, there it's there's a there's a, a lot of people aren't keen to delayed gratification, but 
you have to be patient and be willing to put the work in. Eventually, the delay falls in line with your mainstream income. You're only delayed in the front. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually, it catches up, and every time you post something, you get something. Because it's okay. from a year ago or it's from five years ago, whatever it is. The, I, I wrote in my notes that the formula is simple. If you want uh, more meetings, more presentations, like you write in the book, more personal relationships, and of course, more sales, mm -hmm. then more virtual. So do can when you say virtual, you don't just mean going live, even though that's the, the primary no. premise of the book. What, what yeah. all can people do? Let's talk about what all they can do to, to virtually influence and show up for their customers in a way that they could serve and give. The best idea that I created this year came at the end of the year when I told everybody on the 959 to go to Hippo Video, use hippovideo.com. Okay. Register because you get a free week. And instead of sending a Christmas card, send an email with an embedded video in it where you're thanking people for their support, their loyalty, their whatever you're doing, you know, wishing them well, wishing them health. People went nuts. One guy got three biz three orders as a result of it. And just by prospecting with video or at least introducing no, themselves only through video. Send a Christmas message. Oh, sending a Christmas message through his yeah, video. He said, Merry Christmas and happy new year and health to you. And da -da -da. people were so blown away they called him. So instead of doing instead of doing uh cards like everybody else, he's putting himself in front of the customer with a with a video message, which they know takes a little bit of time and effort, and it's unique and separates yeah. him from the entire rest of the pack of people who might be trying to earn his business in the future. Yes. Christmas card, yes. People will Christmas cards will always be sent, but now they're sent by about half the amount of people that would normally send them. Yeah. And you don't even sign them. You put your fucking, you know, it's gold stamp with our name on it. No, dude, I'd rather see a broken pencil with your name on it that you signed with. People don't For the record, I, I'm a paying customer of Hippo Video as well and love it and use it. I use it prime for me, I primarily use it for introductions. And again, you're helping me when you're on these shows like this because thinking about, well, that's how I should be sending happy new year messages to customers right. and prospects, to right. clients and prospects. Right. And it's and it's and it, honestly, it's just anytime you've got a good reason, do it with video, is what you're saying. I'll tell you, yes. I'll tell you one. And it's pretty point. easy to use. You can just record the video and it sends it from the system as an email from you. And you can tell when they watched it. And you can track, the, you can track analytics. I love that. So here's the deal. I send videos when I send a proposal. Okay. I put it in the email. I said, the, this. I've attached the proposal. It's pretty boring. It's not quite self-explanatory, but let me explain what happens once you decide yes. And then I give a one minute thing and I send the video. 100% closing, 100% closing so far on every video I put in a proposal. Geez, I wonder why. You know, I, here's the crazy part, Jeffries. I know this stuff. I, I think I know this stuff. But I, I mean, I just sent a proposal yesterday and did not do that. And so I'm like, Dang. And you know what's funny is I was kind of racking my brain and I had already had a meet a proposal meeting with the client. So it was more of just a confirmation of it. But I the, but and and they text me and I text them and but to be able to just send a quick video, it you know makes you stand out. And I've done that with this particular person I'm that I'm thinking of in my mind, but to do it as part of that process is awesome. Yeah. Uh, I, want throw something. Okay. I want to throw something I want to throw something These are subtle, simple ways you could differentiate yourself in virtual yeah. selling that people are not doing. You know, um, serendipity is God's way of remaining anonymous. That's a quote of mine that I've had for a long time. And I'm thinking about doing this course. Uh, in fact, I've already started to do it called your, Have Your Best Decade Ever. Because everybody wants to do their best year. I think it's bullshit. I want to have it a decade. Yeah. So Nikita Koloff, who is like my brother, like you, um, and Jen, um, sends a, a quote, an inspirational quote out every day, texts it out to about 20 or 30 people. And as I'm thinking about how am I going to do this, I get a picture of Jim Rohn 
and attached to it is now is the time to fix the next 10 years. <laughs> That's awesome. Ooh, 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 yeah. Ooh. And you look for those signs, and, but if you're paying attention, you get them. If you're not paying attention, you don't get them. So the key is not simply to just look up about the world, pay attention to the world. And pay attention to your inspirations like that. Yeah. And because if you don't act on them, the universe, God, will give it to somebody else. Oh, totally. To go act totally. on. Yeah. Totally. And that's an invaluable lesson in of itself. Um, in the book, Big Magic, she talks about that that inspiration that can come to you. And then if you don't listen for it or pay attention to it, you're incredibly tuned in to your own intuition and inspirations and act on it because watching how fast you even put out books is an inspiration. Um, you, okay. You, you, uh, um, if somebody wanted you talk about going live every day with these value messages and, yeah, and you're doing it every day, you do it for about 20 to 30 minutes a day for 300 yep. days in a row. Okay. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm like a snail getting myself there. I'm going once a week. That's fine. The exception of when I'm, the same day. Right. <laughs> right. So I've been going once a week, uh, very, very much trying to be very consistent with Tuesdays at 1 PM Eastern with guests like you on the, not your average Joe show. And then, uh, consistently putting out the podcast. I've only missed, um, due to, I actually didn't schedule, um, during the holidays with my kids for a week. And then I dealt with a couple weeks of being sick and, uh, that threw me a little off track, but I kept thinking of you, like if you were this, even if you were as sick as I was, you probably still would have went live. <laughs> I know you, I yeah. turned off everything, but I thought in the back of my head, man, Jeffrey, I can't talk, call Jeffrey right now. Cause he's going to tell me I'm the biggest wimp he's ever known. Because even if you're down for the count with fevers, you should be going live. But I know um, this value message every day. Talk about how someone – now, there might be some newer entrepreneurs on here. Mm -hmm. And and maybe they don't feel like they have a wealth of knowledge, okay? And the amount of experience like you have in business. But they still can find something that inspires them or something that can – more importantly, add value to a prospective client who might be on the other end of their social media at some point. And this is what I want people to think about is that, because you talk about this, I want you to elaborate on this. Customers will find you. If you, if you reach out to someone, they're going to look you up. They're going to look you up on Facebook. They're going to look you up on LinkedIn. Every time. They're going to look time. you up on your website. Talk about first impressions there. And then what kind of value messages should people be digging out? So when the customer finds them, they go, Hey, this is somebody who with, without the wealth, maybe of experience, right. still knows okay. what they're doing. I want to do business with them. Maybe. First of all, think about yourself. Mm -hmm. Do you have something that you're exceptionally well versed at or in? Um, okay. It's referred to euphemistically in today's world as your zone of genius. Yeah. And if you have a zone of genius, then that's what you need to post about because it can potentially get you known as that. And it will attract people that are looking for people who have genius in that area. Yeah. And I think that there's a, um, a situation that occurs with most people where they don't have the confidence in themselves to be able to move forward with that. I don't, I don't get it. You you have if you don't have balls, sales is not for you. You well, need sales balls. Oh, hey Jen, the wife is on. I love this. Awesome. And Jen contributed an awesome. Actually, I'm sure she contributed a lot more chapter to the book um, because you both do the sell or die podcast, and like you said, over two million downloads. Congratulations, yep. by the way, that's amazing. And the uh, but in the book, Ken. Ken Walls in Ken Walls's chapter, he lays out four things. And I remember when he was kind of doing research for this chapter of the book, and he reached out to me and said, Joe, what do you think is the number one reason people don't go live or don't share their video messages? You mentioned one being confidence, a lack of confidence. You don't get it because you are Mr. Confident. He Jeffrey wrote the little gold book of yes attitude, which if you need a confidence boost, if you need an attitude adjustment 
or just want to, and I, we give it as a gift to our kids, get that book. But Ken, Ken wrote, there's four things. And one of them was one I actually said to him, which I think he was already thinking about. But but one, he says, I don't feel like they have anything of value to talk about. Everyone can find, like you just said, their zone of genius. Talk about what you are the most comfortable talking about, which part of the business or what part of what can help your client are you well versed in? And if you're not, go do some research and some digging. I sidetrack here for a minute. I remember when someone said to me, Joe, how did you, when, back in 2014 uh, to 2016, we we took on a lot of restaurants. I mean, at one time, we had dozens and dozens of restaurants we were helping at one time on a mm -hmm. monthly basis. People said, well, how did you know, how did you get to know so much about restaurants and restaurant marketing? And I said, the moment we decided to start helping restaurants was the moment I, first of all, went and got like six books on the restaurants. I found a hospitality owner and had him teach me the, uh, the numbers behind restaurants and, you know, uh, food costs and labor costs and what they go through, what their challenges are. I immersed myself in learning the subject. That's a side note. But that's, in other words, you can figure out what to talk about if you're willing to immerse yourself and learn your industry and business and your client's business well enough. But number two, it's a big one. Whoa, I'm making my table shake. And that is uh, they're afraid of being judged. What do you say to someone who, you know, doesn't have the courage to be disliked or they are fearful of being judged by other people? I can tell you that I piss off people every day. Now, maybe it's because I'm from Philly, but I don't give a shit. Some people just need to be successful someplace else or be happy someplace else. I'm not going to please everybody. But the people that I do please, they're there. They're loyal. They're going to because they know I'm giving them a truth that they can convert into a currency. And whether yeah. that currency is value or money, it's still a currency. And so you have to look at this from the perspective of what are you doing that gratifies you that could potentially gratify somebody else. Don't worry about people that don't like you. Fuck them. They have a car payment. You don't need, you don't need those people. What yeah. you need is people that care about you, that follow you, that make, you know, it's. If you live your life in fear of half the people being against you, then you'll never be president of the United States because they never get more than half. One out of two people hates them, hates them, and they're president of the United States. Well, this is this is what's brilliant about what you're saying, and and I, I'm gonna uh, pull out what I'm hearing, and that and that is be willing. Uh, first of all, be willing to have haters and enemies, and just accept that. But Jeffrey has a quality that if you look at people like the president or people that are uh, hyper successful in business and sales and marketing and whatever tend to have uh, and and is that polarizing trait so you you polarize the market you mm -hmm. you find mm -hmm. a way to differentiate or die and you're gonna you have to what i call pick a side so picking a side is half the people that may find you or see your stuff may not be attracted or or, or like you and the other half will you know i think of you know yourself i think of people like Grant or Cardone, you know, Cardone, I think of people like yeah. Gary Vee, either love or hate these people that are out there. And the, the quality you have is it's you're absolutely fine with whatever side they choose. Right. So Does here's that my, impact you? I, I'm going to give you an exact example. I have a three word definition of cold calling. Waste of time. <laughs> and people it. go, well, you can I make a lot of money cold calling when they send that email to me. And yeah. I, I'll email them back and say, you know what? We differ in our definitions of the word a lot. <laughs> and, you, you know, I'm going to stick by my philosophy. Cold calling is a lousy place to make a sale, but it's a great place to learn how to sell. Everybody should cold call until they don't have to cold call anymore. But it has to be something where it's, it's you know, you, you're, you're eating baby food for a year then you're out of baby food. You wear diapers for two years and you're out of, you know, that's, that's the whole deal. You, you graduate. So yeah. you don't make a cold call when you've been in sales for 10 years. That's bullshit. That is total bullshit. There should be attraction enough about you and your reputation and your customers who refer you and your social presence and your social proof. That's enough to get your phone to ring. 
And if it isn't, you got a problem. Jeffrey, what do you say to people who say think well there's there's it's too um it's too saturated with people actually going on video right now. I mean and, and online and and uh there's there's a lot of other people Ken writes about other people doing it already. Do you do you feel like that's it's even scratched the surface yet of what it could be? No, no. You know, Gabrielle, my our, our 11 year old daughter, plays word cookies. She's a YouTuber, and she watches these kids who come on and talk about not word cookies, um, Animal Crossings. Animal Crossings is this like it, um, you can only get it if you have a Nintendo Switch. She's on it. She makes money from it. It's it's unbelievable because it's all entrepreneurial. There's nothing bad about it. Well, I she think also it's also on iPad. Uh, maybe. I hope it is. My, my daughter plays it. Oh, cool. Okay, so there, there has to be an understanding that these kids, right, they have millions of followers, not thousands, millions of followers. A guy puts on makeup all day long, and he has 25 million followers. His name is James Charles. He has a makeup line. He came through Charlotte Airport, and Gabrielle's going, James Charles is in Charlotte. Ah, <laughs> These guys are, they're, they're, who the hell are they? Do you think they're thinking the market is saturated? No. They're kids who, they're making a million dollars a month from YouTube royalties and the, and the merch that they sell. Gabrielle has a, has a, a $60 hoodie sweatshirt from some little girl that comes on and she identifies with him and wants the shirt. What are you going to say? No. Yeah. So you, you have this, just understand, look at what a 12-year-old's doing. That's going to show you the future. Look at what a 15-year-old's doing. That's going to show you the future. Go on YouTube and look for people that post about makeup, about um, making videos, about opening up yeah. packages from, I mean, it's, it's crazy. And they get millions, not thousands, millions of views within a day. My, my uh, son came up to me the other day and he's on you know on TikTok and he says um dad he's like I'm almost at 80,000 I said 80,000 what 80,000 followers and I'm like okay you're officially the best the most successful social media digital marketer in our family like this is insane and right. and uh he goes he goes live uh sometimes on um like Instagram and stuff but he's you know posting videos he's got his own way of driving curiosity but I I, this is no kidding. I was on the phone or on a Zoom call yesterday, and one of the participants on there was from Portugal. And she said, I think I know who your son is. From Port she's from Portugal. She's like, she, she, she explained, she described his videos. I said, Yeah, that's him. And she's like, Oh, yeah. And she's and he kind of created this little movement. I won't go into it here, but you're right. You can learn a lot from watching how kids are exactly. using social media because their brain doesn't think monetization right away. It doesn't think about how do I make money? They think about how do I capture the attention of the people who might watch my video and or give value. Kids already have a bank. Their mother and father. <laughs> yeah. so they're not worried, they're worried about that part. They're worried about yeah. having a good time. And they're having a great they're having a great time at this. I mean literally a great time at this. And so I would challenge yeah. you if you really want to learn about how to make a video, look at what these kids are doing. Yeah, They're just brilliant about this, and they don't really care if they mess up, make mistakes. They just go, they go for it. Exactly, they're resilient in that way, and you know you have to be careful because they can be affected by how they're judged or the haters, and so you've got to coach yeah. your children through how to respond to some of that. But other than that, they don't think about, oh, is my lighting just perfect right now, or is my, you know, does this make my ass big? Right, or is my background? you know, the right, the right background for me to use. Uh, yeah. Mom and dad are the credit union. Uh, Cody right. said, that's brilliant. Yeah. Okay. I so really, by the way, I had a really nice talk with Cody the other day. He's such a nice person. Cody's awesome. Oh. And, he's just, and he's going live on video. He's posting video. Yeah. Um, if you see Cody in the comments here on Facebook or uh, go to his, go look at his stuff because he's, showing you how to market and talk about luxury real estate and how to uh, do things in an unconventional and orthodox way oftentimes. And he's doing it via video and educating his customers and it's going to pay yep. off. It already is. He's, um, 
and Joey says, thanks, guys. I got to go run literally. And this is Joey from Joey's Hot Sauce dot com who was a guest on my show okay and you're in the um i love what tara says in the book because she says uh are you working for your content or is your content working for you because Whoa. like i said we go live here with uh you know this discussion it will work for me for months to come weeks to come months to come and even years to come because it'll be repurposed onto my podcast turn into a blog and things like that um, you say mastering, you talk about mastering your social footprint by doubling your social outreach and, and your quality social connections. Um, and then mastering social media proof. What do you mean by that? Social proof is everything in this world right now. What, Nobody, is, what do you mean by, what is social proof to someone who's going, what do you mean? If you're going to go to a hotel on a vacation, what's the first thing you do? You go to TripAdvisor and you see what their rating is. If you're going to go to a restaurant, yeah, you go to Yelp to see what their especially, rating is. Especially in a new area, yeah. The world is run by the number five. <laughs> Amazon.com, the book is a 4.7. Yeah. Uber, the driver's a 4.9. But you're not going to get in a car with a driver who's a 3.1. That guy's a Great. disaster. And so you have the world is driven by number five. The car dealerships will send you a postcard and the sales guy will beg you to give them a five. Please, please give. It's so important to us that we get a five because if I don't get a five, they, they recircumcise me. <laughs> and so I, I want to make sure that this particular um, point is understood when I reverse it. Would your customers rate you a five? Mm. How would they feel about you as a person in the way you conduct your business, in your speed of response, in the value that you offer, um, your connectability, all the things that, that you need to have, the ease of doing business with you, all of those things combine to equal your five. And you better be five at it or you're going to lose to somebody who is, even though they may be inferior, they look better. Yeah, and there's the perceived value there again. Unbelievable. And, and so, and and we have here's the cool part is that we have control over this stuff. I mean, I always say that. Twenty years ago, can you imagine someone who says, "Listen, in twenty years, you could have your own show and it's free." So, somebody congratulated me on my like second yeah. or third episode on my second and third episode. And they're like, "Man, Joe, congratulations on the not your average Joe show," as if it was bestowed to me or granted to me by some major network. Right. And I'm like, no, I just woke up one day and said, I'm going to I'm I'm right. right. go live on my own show and I'm going to call it a show and I'll repurpose it. And it's just a decision, right? Imagine if we, but, and then, and then 20 years ago, they said, well, and you could have the potential of promoting that show and getting in front of tens of thousands of people. I'll promote this and we'll get in front of tens of thousands, if not more than a hundred thousand people with this one episode on just the social media platforms and primarily Facebook to start with and then YouTube. And uh, who knows what the podcast will do from there. But just that alone is within my control. That's the beauty. Imagine if it's within your control. Total control. Yeah. For very little investment of time and, and a little bit of money if you want to put some ad spend behind it. And you can do that right now. This is the people who are watching this going, but how do I get my customers to attend or to watch? And the answer is, you might have to spend a few dollars. This is something I had to hound Jeffrey on for a while, was just spend a few dollars a day and your reach will even go even further with your broadcasts. It doesn't cost very much. You can pay somebody from Upwork.com or even Fiverr to help you do you know promotional posts of your show and stuff on Facebook. It didn't take a Facebook ad genius to be able to do that and to target the people who might be most likely to do business with you so they can see the value you're delivering in the world start doing that stuff bring on the ceo of your best customer and have them as a guest i love that that's so who do you think they're going to say this they're going to repurpose their own podcast and that I, is I, I, an I, example I of social proof jeffrey yeah exact total um joachim from norway says give away loads of candy and sell the toothpaste and he's absolutely correct my dentist who's an amazing guy encourages everybody to eat lots of candy. Yeah. It's good. It's good for you. It's good. 
<laughs> of course. Blake says, what video meeting should I use? It doesn't matter. I think Zoom is the most accepted right now. It's being used yeah. by everyone. Um, you know, there is just like a link. Well, yeah, but, stream, but to meet with clients, you know, to, uh, then use Zoom if you're meeting one on one. If you're using doing, if you're going to go broadcast, you can use StreamYard for free. Yeah, yeah. It's, you, it's uh, uh, use StreamYard dot live uh, and uh, or just Google it and you you know it's it's free to use. There's a paid version that's very inexpensive, twenty bucks a month or something like that. If you want to be on multiple multiple platforms. Mm -hmm. really inexpensive, no excuse. And quite honestly, none of these platforms, none of these uh, tools matter as much as the effort to get it done matters and to do it consistently, um, now, which I, I love. So I want to throw something else at you, Joe. Yeah. In, in this chat, mm -hmm. we probably have a half a dozen testimonials about how good we are, about what we do and how we do it. We didn't ask for them. No, we, 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 says legend. There's definitely and, one legend here. Well, but <laughs> the bottom line is people are willing to say nice things about you. Yeah. If you earn it. If you earn it, not if you ask for it. I'm not going to ask somebody, although occasionally I'll ask my 959ers if they own the book go live, would you say something about it? Or if you yeah. own the, the get shit done book, say something about it. And they will. And I send well, it to the publisher and makes him feel like shit for not promoting the book. I uh, I would encourage people not just to pick up a copy of this, by the way, but also to, if you like the book and it helps you, if this show helped you, write a review. Write a review on the book. Uh, Jeffrey, you talk about in the book, one of my favorite things that you teach that I'm consistently trying to learn from you is humor. And you have a whole chapter on it in, in the book. And you talk about the name of it's master master humor. What what can somebody do to learn how to be humorous? Like you say, well, let me just stop before you say that. You say um, make people laugh and you'll and you'll and they'll, you'll make people buy. Mm -hmm. How? But how? Give us the how to that. Most people do not think funny. Most, Most people, people think funny. They think serious. How can they when they're just watching the news all day and getting I pounded with Gabrielle, negativity? I teach Gabrielle to think funny first. I love that. Think funny first. And what do you um, mean? Jennifer and I and Gabrielle are walking to the beach. We're about 50 yards from the ocean. And Jen goes, it smells like a fish store here. And Gabrielle goes, Jen, this is where the fish live before they get to the store. <laughs> that's thinking funny that's funny got it he didn't like oh yeah it really stinks here no she thinks funny yeah she could have she could have toppled on that quote a hundred times but instead she thinks of a response to it so she's not chiming in she's building it up better with a smile yeah the best one I've ever seen of Gabrielle, she was dancing in her room and she she stepped on a piece of glass, evidently from a broken something or other, and her toe starts bleeding like hell and she's screaming bloody murder and Jen gets her on the bed and literally operates on her to take the piece of glass out. And Gabrielle's going, no, no, she's crying her eyes out. And, and I said, Gabrielle, you're going to have to Neosporin or something. And she goes, no, I don't want to. And Jen picks her up. This 11 year old kid picks her up, puts her over her shoulder, and carries her into the bathroom. And I see Gabrielle going to the bathroom like this. <laughs> <laughs> it was she awesome. recognizes that situation yeah. and finds a way to make it funny. That's great. Exactly. And you, if you, the one gift you could give your kids is teach them to think funny. Think funny first. We watch Phineas and Ferb. We watch SpongeBob. We watch every funny show you can possibly watch. All the kids' movies are phenomenal. The B movie. Oh. Ratatouille. Oh Seinfeld. That's a Seinfeld. He's, he's, he is the B. Yeah, I love that. Exactly. We're the same way. Every chance I get, I try to find a funny kid show to put on. If if we're in. If it's like, you know, devices down and play, do something in the house. I'll sometimes put a show on um, 
for that purpose. It's like, I need them to hear oh funny things. And sometimes I'll have to call it out as what's funny and be funny, but I, it's a whole lot better than putting on news and things like that. And we rarely have the TV on our house period, but I love that you watch Venus and Ferb, you're watching shows that are funny and you're getting, you're encouraging out of your kids. You're not turning on the news and making sure that they're hearing this, this influence that's, you know, no matter what side you're on, I mean, there isn't a, there isn't any news station that's positive. So turn it all off and uh, think funny first. And maybe, you know, Justin says study comedians, practice right. your material. I love that. Here's the funniest guy on the Great planet. Advice. We hang and talk humor. We hang yeah. and talk humor. And he's just a brilliant joke writer. And his stories yeah. are, they're not funny. They're hysterical. Uh, some are a little blue, but, you know, is what it is. But he's just, he's an unbelievably funny guy. He thinks funny. Yeah. Everything about him is funny. And if you don't have that, people want to do business with people love doing business with people that make them laugh, that, that think funny first. And, you know, it, it's think about what you're doing when you are meeting with a prospective client, if you can make them laugh, that's right. such a treat nowadays because everything that's, you know, in terms of what crisis we're coming out of here, it's, it's refreshing more than ever to make people I, laugh. Now. Here's a classic example. It's raining outside and I'll be with a customer and they go, Oh, the rain. Blah, blah. I say, you know, me too. My, it ruins my hair. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so Puts it in perspective I, immediately. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a couple, uh, well, here's what I want to encourage people to do um, is yeah, uh, Charles says, watch blazing saddles, animal house when Harry met Sally. That's right. Another, another right. film. Surround yourself with people who are funny. Pay, put your attention on things that are funny. Some of this will come natural because you'll hear stories and funny stuff that you can reference when you're meeting with clients. Another thing to think about. That you never forget. That you never forget. Yeah. If you go to Katz's, Coachman just said where Harry met Sally. Yeah. At Katz's Deli in New York City where this was filmed, mm -hmm. they have a sign hanging from their ceiling. This is the table that Rob Reiner's mother sat at where she said, I'll have what she's having. Yeah. Arguably one of the funniest lines ever. So just think about that. And think about how memorable those lines are. Okay. Real quick. If, if you have a question, let's take a couple questions, um, post them in the comments. Yep. And I also want to encourage you, and, you know, to post what your biggest takeaway is from today's session. For those of you who have stuck with us, what's your biggest takeaway? What's something you could act on? Start doing tomorrow. What kind of actionable advice did you get? And then, and, and, uh, and what, and do you have a question? Let's put that on here. Yeah. Cause Charles says, I'll have what she's having. That is the funny line. Everybody, you could say that and every, it puts you right in the scene of that movie. Because it was so funny. And that's that's a point while people are putting this in here, Jeffrey, is that uh, it also makes you unforgettable. So correct. you hear lines that make movies unforgettable and that you never forget. But that tells you if you can do something to make your customer or your prospective customer laugh, your audience laugh, guess who becomes the memorable one? Right. Right. Exactly. Guess who gets invited into the office? Guess who gets called back? Guess who gets their phone calls returned? Rizzo, my voicemail, right. for those of you who have ever heard it, I don't give my cell phone number out ever, but for those of you who have it, it's the Three Stooges. It's the Three. Je Jeff, let me just repeat that. Jeffrey Gittimer's voicemail is the Three Stooges. That recorded by, by Rizzo. By Rizzo, yeah. He basically wrote the script. We tweaked it just a little bit, but he basically wrote the script and recorded it, and it's brilliant. Hey, Mo, get him in here. You know, and it, I literally, it mentions my name. Hey, what are we going to do? Hey, come on, fellas, we got work to do. And he does it so well. It took two takes to do it. I've had it for two years. I'm never changing it. Well, maybe never is a long time, but usually means not till next week. But uh, for the moment, I'm keeping it because it's brilliant. 
It's just absolutely brilliant. People will call me on the phone and say, oh, yeah. hey, I was, I was hoping you wouldn't answer. Um, with a buddy of mine, would you mind just letting your phone ring so I could play your voicemail for him? Now, who does that? Right, right. Who does what's, that? Your, what's your voicemail sound like? Yeah, your voicemail. Let me, if you're, if you're taking notes, let me give you notes about your voicemail. It fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> There's no you. I, my, before Rizzo. Everybody's like, rethinking their voicemail now. Like Jeffrey oh, Gittimer, yeah. King of Sales, has the three stooges on his voicemail. My voicemail sounds like I'm putting someone to sleep. My, my older voicemail used to say, I'm not here right now. Please leave your American Express card number and that expiration date, and I'll get right back to you. And people would leave it. People would literally leave their Amex number. But yeah. it's it's funny. It's humorous. Yeah. That's the deal. Uh, uh, Blake, I'll, I'll answer this first. It, there, you know, it's not really a one, two, three step method. It's all right. these different things we're talking about that you want to put the effort in to get in front of prospective clients. So start using you know, hippo video or something like that. Okay. Where you can send a customer a video as your prospecting mechanism. Yep. It can be, it could, and it doesn't have to be like you doing some sort of lengthy analysis on the business. Just be, just be a hello, happy new year, reaching out, um, say happy new year to clients or prospective clients. If you're trying to get clients and um, a couple of things I saw that we can help you with, or that I can see you can use immediate help with is this and this. Happy to send you some ideas along, you know, over to you, whatever it might be that you can do where you're not pitching them and not even asking for an appointment. You're just right. giving some value. I would also start going live. And then by going live, when they find you on social media, when they and maybe you only have one or two people, right? Jeffrey, watch your live. Yep. And but when someone finds you that you're prospecting the next week and they see and hear and get value from whatever it was you were discussing or yeah. talking or maybe the guests you had like a Jeffrey or whoever, like Jeffrey gave invaluable advice earlier, put one of your past clients on your show or even a prospective client. You could actually find someone and say, listen, you actually are in an industry that I serve and I'd love for other people in your industry to hear how you guys have gotten the accolades I recently read about in XYZ article and I'd love to have you on the show to feature you with some suggestions and tips to the, my audience. Je what do you think, Jeffrey? Perfect. Start doing that. You know, just and the people who earlier, don't. Just wake yeah. up earlier. Just, you know, do something to get out of your routine. Because if you're complaining about it or you're telling me about what's not working, obviously keeping doing that is not going to work any better. So you have to start doing something different that will allow you to think in a different pattern. So if you wake up a little earlier and the first thing you do is watch 20 minutes worth of funny stuff, eventually you're going to feel better about your life and your health. Just watch scenes from old Saturday Night Live skits from from uh, Chris Farrell or John Belushi. Um, or just, you know, watch watch anything that's going to make you laugh. Yeah. That you find funny. And you know what? All of a sudden you're going to figure out your own stuff. Don't repeat jokes. Just don't. Three guys walking into a bar does not work. Um, but what does work is your are your funny stories. So I'm going to sh share yeah. with you how to come up with them. Go back to the house that you grew up in and picture yourself in a room. And I promise you, stories will begin to flow. Then go back to your first job or your second job or your third job and picture yourself in the office or talking to your boss, or talking to a customer. And I promise you that you'll come up with stories. Then go back to college and picture yourself in the, in the dumbest classroom in the, on the planet. And sometimes you don't even feel like you're being funny, but you're funny. I, I, ha I was in a, a, a statistics class at Temple University, and I don't want to say how long ago, but let's say 50 years ago. And this teacher was an absolute tyrant who you have to read the book, you have to underline the thing, we're going to take attendance every day, you can't miss one of two classes, we're going to, the midterm, blah, 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 because the whole thing. And after 20 minutes, he says, are there any questions? And I raised my hand and I said, could you please sign my drop slip? <laughs> and 
the class literally i oh i almost got a standing ovation but i got applause as i left the room <laughs> that is funny <laughs> Now, not only, well, first of all, not only is it funny that you did that in the moment and made everyone laugh, and that made you memorable, but the fact that you can reflect on something in your past, reshare oh, yeah. it, and still oh, yeah. just damn funny. I want everyone to hear the the meta lessons in this that he's giving you, because he just demonstrated how you can reflect on your past experience and and share a story that's flipping funny. So, and I I, I um. It's one of the things I love about you is is how fast you can pull from experiences and and memories yeah. and stories and 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 it's constant laughter when I'm around you and uh, I think that's the secret sauce. It's actually in a lot of your books. So it's not that secret. You share talk about humor uh, religiously in all your books, but man, you're you're great at teaching it through it by example, Jeffrey. It and you you're, you're, here. you're just comfortable with it. You know, you don't, it doesn't put you on edge. Somebody's sad story. Yeah. Yeah. It puts you in a different zone. I, I don't want to hear somebody else's angst. I want to hear yeah. about somebody else's humor. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. So I, um, I want to keep going about all this, but so what's one thing, Jeffrey, people should start doing like tomorrow. They wake up. From everything you just shared, number one action step is what? Develop a better morning routine that includes reading and writing. Ah. It can include watching, but reading, writing, and watching. Let's, let's do it that way. If you do that, you're going to put yourself in a much better frame of mind, and you've actually begun to create the content that others might be interested in. Make them laugh and take their money. Funny. There's so many things you can learn about humor. That is funny, Michelle. So okay. because, first of all, because Michelle posts this and it's funny, um, even though it's a, a little bit bold, um, Michelle, yeah. I'm going to send you a copy also of the signed problem. copy. Jeffrey Gittermer signed copy. So now we got given away two books so far of Jeffrey's new book, Go Live, Turn Virtual, uh, virtual Connections into Paying Customers. Michelle, private message me and I'll send you a signed copy in the mail of Jeffrey's book. Wake up, be funny, go live, and add values is Justin's takeaways. I love that. Yeah. Tony actually went on a Zoom call, and he's back already in the time that we started this show. This is the longest oh I've done this show because cool. um, we could kind of go on forever. But, Jeffrey, yeah. thanks so much for being my guest today. And, and uh, I'm going to stop it here so I can keep having you back. And if you haven't already got the book, and you can go to golivebook.com. You're crazy. Go get the book. There is actionable advice layered in every chapter of this book. In fact, you lay out all the to-do actions after every chapter. I encourage you uh, to do that. You heard Jeffrey share. Um, I'd rewind this, actually replay this, because there's so many different gold nuggets that he shared and he demonstrated. And uh, for that, I'm grateful. I'm blessed to be business partners with you in our mastermind program. If you want to be part of our mastermind, private message me and I'll get you some details as we're reopening it for 2021. We're meeting in Charlotte at Jeffrey's house for the mastermind, Mind Blown. It's going to be amazing in March. I love um, it. I can't wait. Je oh, Jeffrey, what does your shirt say? Blake says, real quick, let's just read your shirt. You always have awesome messages in your shirt. It only takes everything you've got. <laughs> love it. You can't half-ass anything, dude. You can't half-ass anything. Yeah. Awesome. Did all did all the contributing authors of your book, did they all record their chapters? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I'm I that was not an option. I haven't heard the audio version yet. I'm I'm, I'm chapter I don't know, I'm like page 43 in the book. I it's a uh I don't know where I'm at in the book. I think I'm this I'm third or fourth chapter in, but um I'm I'm it's not as long as Ken Walls's chapter. That guy went on forever in your book, but he has amazing insight and advice. So um, I like it. Yeah. Page 44. There I am. Thank you for having me in the book. Go get the book. If you're hearing, I don't care when you're listening to this, get the book. It's a 2021 book. It was written for the post pandemic. So it's relevant. It's new packed with actionable advice. Put your biggest takeaway in the comments, share this 
with people that you know and love and care about so we can get the word out about Not Your Average Joe Show. Jeffrey is not average. Thanks for listening, everyone. And until next time, uh, Jeffrey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Help you all. Bye. Tune in next week for the Not Your Average Joe Show with international business mentor Joe Soto. 